What's going on guys? Welcome to the first episode of Q&A with Seth Hendo and Team Pilot NV Astro. So let's go ahead and get started with the first question. Yeah! Okay, so the first question we got is by Mark Baker and he is asking what camera are you using and what are your camera settings? So for his first question, what camera am I using? I'm using the Foxier V3 which can be found at fpvflyclub.com and I've been flying that in about six or five Tokyos that I have and my camera settings, well I use nearly stock settings on the V3. The only thing that I change is I turn on the wide dynamic range on. I turn on the um, the color for night mode so it won't be white and black because I don't like that. I do color always on and then I change my contrast to from 150 down to 100. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. We have Mark Rash asking what type of solder do you recommend and what soldering tips can you give to make better solder joints? Well we're no electrical engineer experts or anything like that but this is what has worked for me and both of us actually mm -hmm. and uh, this is right here this is the solder that I use you can buy this like at fries for like 20 bucks for the whole coil and roll like that so this is 6040 it's not lead free um, solder with rosin core so meaning it has a little bit of flux already to help you to help that flow whenever you're soldering with pads or any wires like that and if you have any 6040 solder that doesn't have flux uh we do i do use this sometimes this is um let that focus a little bit this is rosin core itself and you pretty much dab a little bit of the wire or onto the pad that you need to put solder on and then it'll flow right onto it so that this helps a lot if you're having any issues and i highly recommend to any beginner of you guys that are starting like a first build type of thing this helps a lot because i know it helped me and um let's move on to the next question okay so next question we have nick what do you recommend for racing FC rates? I'm sure different tracks call for different rates possibly. Can you go over your experience and what do you do to tune in a good rate for racing? Thanks. So, well, um, typically you want to start your tuning of rates while you're practicing. Not practicing on race day, but practicing during the week or whenever you go and get ready for an event. Um, you want rates for racing that are uh, typically below 500 um 500 what revolutions per second revolutions or degrees per second degrees per second same okay. thing really. <laughs> uh anyway you want to below 500 because you when you start racing and you're getting up to high speeds 80 90 percent throttle um things happen very quickly uh the quad responds really really easily to almost anything so you don't want to be too sensitive with your rates because it will put you on a bad line. It'll make all sorts of things happen. <clears throat> so you want those things to happen a little bit more fluidly and a little bit, a little bit more predictably. What do you think? And uh, just pretty much like you were touching on that point yeah. right now, it helps lower rates, helps um, your flying and racing become a lot more smoother and just, it helps you make pretty good lines around the track. And um, I think a lot of the big mistake out there people make is they see like big people like Mr. Steele, Chad and then they see like Johnny FPV high, uh, running high rates and they want to uh, fly high rates for freestyle but I mean for racing you want to be precise uh, through through your gates you want to be precise with your lines you want to be smooth and I think anything below at least 500 degrees per second helps you helps you uh, helps you out with that so yeah. for that pretty much to answer your question is go below anything below 500 degrees per second below everything else is a pretty much preference as long as you're below that pretty much my overall experience with uh, my rates it took me a long time to uh, actually find a comfortable rate that I was I was good with and um, I'm sure you guys will probably take a while too so don't get frustrated if you can't find your rate that is suitable for you so with that let's go ahead and move on to the next question so next question is by Anthony Garcia his question is do you fly with camera at full tilt on any of the Tokyo frames and if you do or do not what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing so? So, you want to answer this question? Sure, I can talk about the uh, disadvantages mostly. Okay. Um, I've tried uh, higher than 45 uh, on the camera, and let me tell you, it is difficult to fly like that. Mm -hmm. uh, your, car, your quad wants to come down, go towards the ground yeah, a lot. Yeah, a lot. Uh, you have to stay on throttle 
in turns, out of turns, pretty much 100% of the time. And that's very difficult to do if you're making uh, sharp turns or if you screw up something and you need to recover. It's difficult to, to really stay on throttle the whole time. So uh, what we found is that 45, 40 to 45 degrees is kind of the sweet spot uh, for racing. Mm -hmm. um, what it does for you is allows you to maintain altitude without neither being really hard on the throttle or being too low on the throttle. You can actually maneuver within that, that range pretty easily. Um, the, that would be, to me, the only negative is that you, your quad wants to come to the ground a lot above 45 degrees. Yeah, because uh, believe it or not, I used to fly like at 60 degree camera mm -hmm. tilt, but uh, I realized that that just wasn't, um, it wasn't good for me uh, because I found my way, uh, I found myself having to switch the angle so often because it wasn't suitable for every track, 60 degree, degrees wasn't. Like if I wanted to fly in a parking garage, indoor, or or something where it was a real tight track, it, 60 degrees was just way too much and I found myself being on the throttle way too much. And another thing too, to whenever you're at uh, 60 degree, you're like about here. So technically your, your yaw becomes your roll at that point. So whenever you're at 40 degrees, everything is still flying pretty similar. So your yaw is still your yaw, your roll is still your roll. It just depends on how you fly, but when you are at that 60 degree high angle, high, uh, yeah, high camera angle, your yaw pretty much becomes your roll, which makes it a lot harder. And um, I, another thing why I use 40 or 45 degree camera tilt is because I use a, a 2.5 millimeter lens. He uses a 1.8, right? Yeah. Uh, which he has a little bit more advantage, but I like the 2.5 stock lens that comes with the Aero V3 because I can pretty much see enough and enough with that 45 degree angle that if I need to slow down, I'll just pitch back on, um, on my pitch axis or if I need to speed up, I'll pitch down. So, and the 2.5 allows me to pretty much see what's in front of me um, just fine, so. And pretty much, uh, I believe that uh, most pilots are rocking anywhere from 2.5 to 1.8 yeah. anyway. Uh, so it gives you plenty of vertical and also horizontal viewing. So that's great. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, there's really no need to run an extremely high yeah, pitch on your camera anyway because literally if I'm at 45 and I wanted to get on it even harder I could pitch and I'm still seeing exactly, exactly what I need to see. And so then same good. thing when you're slowing down. And same thing when so I'm slowing down. So we recommend 40 to 45 degree and then one one good way to find out what degree uh, your camera angle is is hook it up to Betaflight and on the first tab where it shows a little quad moving around mm -hmm. just go ahead and tilt it where your camera lens is pointing forward straight horizontally and then it will tell you what degrees you're at on your pitch axis. So yes. that's a good way to find out what your camera angle is at. So next question. We have Tracy Thomas asking, any idea when the Stretch X will be available? Well, they're available now. So look down in the description below and grab two right of here. them. I got one right here. Where's yours? <laughs> um, I, I, I'd recommend two of them. Get two. Because one thing is that I see a lot of people have is like they have very different qu racing quads at least. Yeah. They're barely getting into uh, racing and they have like three different racers. I would at least have two of the same exact quad. That way, if you do break uh, like a motor or camera or whatever, you just pick, pick one up right up one. and it pretty much flies exactly the same. So I'd recommend you to get two of any frame or any exact setup. That way, whenever you're ready to race, you have exactly two builds built exactly the same and you don't have to adjust for anything. So let's do it. So I next three. <laughs> so next question we have GI Tech. He's asking a little bit of questions actually. So his first question is, is concerning the injection motor canopy. So is it still TPU and what is the weight? So yes, it is still, still TPU, but compared to the, um, the old 3D printer canopy, if you guys could notice, for those that have it at home, you have a little micro hose, but um, you have a little micro hose, which pretty much are pretty much welded together and mounted together with a 3D printer machine. But the injection motor is one solid piece, which gives it a lot more rigid and um, a lot more rigid and solid build and that way you won't ever have separation of the canopy or anything like that. And then another thing with the injection molded, yes they are TPU and the reason we didn't go with a, a harder polycarbonate plastic is because they didn't have a gift. So for example Lexan, I know he is also a asking why didn't we use Lexan versions because Lexan is a little lighter and uh, the reason we didn't use that is because I come from the Sharpoo X frame which had um, polycarbonate Lexan canopy and it was hard but one thing that I found myself with that since I didn't have any give 
it would damage my electronics on on hard real real hard impacts such as my camera and things like that and one thing that where's that sharp food x by the way this is right over there i'll bring it in, in a second here Grab it. so here it is this is pretty much what i come from this is the sharp who x with the um with the lexan polycarbonate um canopy and this is hard plastic compared to this is still tpu it's but the thing is it, whenever i would crash with this it would just damage all my electronics inside, even my flight controller at times, and it, I, we just didn't like it. So therefore, Mike. This was prettier anyway. <laughs> so Mike went ahead and went with the TPU, and yes, it's a little heavier at 32 grams. But honestly, the Tokyo really wasn't built to be a super light frame. It was more to be durable, uh, protect all your electronics, and to avoid fixing so many parts and actually stay up in the air a lot longer. So to there's, me, a, there's a common really theme that you'll see with the with the Tokyo X, with the the uh, SX, with uh, anything that you'll see FPV Flight Club put out is, first of all, it's designed uh, to a standard that is common amongst all of them. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, what you'll see is that some things can be protected, some things can't, okay? Your electronics, your camera, all of those things really need to be protected. Mm -hmm. Those go down, you're gonna be really rebuilding at that point. But the things you can't really protect all that well, your wires, your motors, who's, who's hanging out here, these things, they can get damaged obviously very easily uh, if you hit, hit something pretty hard. But we want this, all this stuff to be safe because we can replace this yeah. easy. We can replace these things just like that. So if all this is good and this is the only thing you have to replace, then you're gonna be fantastic. You can be back up in the air. Yeah, exactly. So that pretty much answers your other question that if we plan on saving a few grams or taking off a few grams off the carbon fiber and that is pretty much no because the Tokyo X was to be built strong pretty much and durable. And for that this we have- This will stay like it is. Yes, but we do have a project that we're working on that is meant to be a super light. We have several projects. So stay tuned for that. And to answer uh, your last question is, uh, are the color variants transparent, opaque, or solid? And that's concerning the injection mode. So and the, injection uh, mode and the first, the first, um, so the first batch would be all solid colors. So meaning like red, blue, green, yellow, orange, things like that. And we will have one transparent, and it'll be clear. And that's like if you maybe could possibly get it uh, injection. I'm sorry, you could possibly get it hydro dipped and get your own design or or something like that. So we'll have those solid colors and then one clear color. So let's move on to the next question. Next question. So we have Luke Landry. His setup is Lumineer QAV Stretched X Lumineer 2206-2450 kV motors running KISS FC on the latest firmware stock pits with Speedix 30 amp ESCs and running an R-Line 1500 milliamp battery. And his question is, in forward flight approximately 35 to 40 degrees, no matter what throttle range doing, light to hard turns, my quad wants to pitch forward even more, leaving me looking at the ground most of the time. I find myself having to apply a little bit of reverse pitch just to make turns. Hard to fly with this happening. He tried increasing eye on the pitch axis, but it's still uh, pitching when turning left or right. What are your suggestions on fixing this? Could it be I did not raise eye high enough on pitch and how it how much is too high? There's a lot going on within that question, man. It um, is. It, it's very. It's going to be pretty hard, pretty much, for us to solve your problem or give you some insight on it. But the first thing and easiest thing to do right now is to pretty much look at your eyes and see where you're at. So our eyes, my eyes at least on my pitch are about at 60, 60. 65, I believe. And do not be afraid to raise your high higher than that as, I mean, everybody has different setups, and even sometimes you may have the exact same build, but the pits may not be exactly the same. It may fluctuate a little bit, but do not be afraid to raise that eye. So, from my, my number one tip, it would be start with that, and if you're still getting that, go ahead, you did say that you were flashed on KISS, KISS firmware, and the reason, this brings me up to a different point. I recently, uh, I'm, I'm still running KISS flight controller, but I flashed it to beta flight, and that's because KISS was giving me a little bit of issues with the firmware, different things were going on. So that's the reason I tried flashing it to um, Betaflight and it fixed all my issues that I was having with KISS firmware. So go ahead and first raise up your eye a lot more. For KISS, I believe I used to run like around 13, no, no, I'm sorry, 0 .55, 0 0.055 on the pitch. So go ahead and put it on that and don't be afraid to raise it up. And um, it doesn't work, go ahead and try to flash it to uh, Betaflight and see if you're still getting those those um, 
the same issues. Yeah, the same issues. Um, and if you are, or if you have any issues like with pit tuning, we did put out a video recently, and that's our last video. So if you haven't, go go ahead and check that out, and it'll help you tune that quad up on Vegas. I got a flight. couple of things on that. Obviously, we don't have your quad in front of us. There's mm -hmm. many, many things physically that could be going on with your quad. If that's all good and great, um, then you know you can just skip this part. But um, in my opinion, anytime something like that happens, it's probably something that you've built onto the frame. Your camera could be losing or gaining um, its pitch. Uh, it may not be tight enough or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, if your flight controller is loose, if you actually started out with the, and say your flight controller is at an angle and you were sitting on the ground and you took off and you go to, you know, if you have, especially if you have auto level on or, or, or any of those type of things, if you're not flying in acro basically, um, then your quad will respond to where that board is sitting. So as long as all those things are right and going in the correct direction, then refer back to what he was talking yeah. about as far as, uh, Flashing it or anything, mm -hmm. whatever. Or even flashing it. And then and after you flash it to Betafly, and if you're still getting issues, then go ahead and check it mechanically. It may be something like a bad motor, a bad prop, or bad FC, you know? So mm -hmm. go ahead and do that if you're still getting issues after you flash it to Betafly. So next question, we have Justin. So my F40 Pros 2400s are getting warm. Is that normal? Not too hot to touch, but warm. Looking at the bottom of the stator, there looks like some epoxy may be melting. Not sure if that motor comes like that. Running Cicada 35 amp 4 in 1 D shot beta flight on KISS FC. Also, if you're flashing beta flight, why not use F4 board instead of KISS? So, you have about three questions here. So, first, to answer your first question, that your F40s are getting warm, is that normal? Um, well, it depends. You said that they're not getting hot to the touch, which is normal depending on how you're flying and what prop and your tune, of course. So, a little bit of insight on that. You want to give us? There's a little bit of everything in that question, also. Um, when you are flying hard, 80, 90, percent throttle around a track for mm -hmm. a minute and a half two minutes maybe even two and a half minutes you're gonna have the motors feel a little bit warm that that to me would be normal now my warm and your warm might be a little bit different but for the most part if you can touch it and keep your finger on there for more than five seconds then it's probably fine but if it is hot at all and you can't keep your finger on there for more than five seconds that means that you could have a number of different problems but mainly it would be your tune Maybe the D is a little too high or something along those lines. Um, maybe you have a flying on bent props. Mm -hmm. Most um, flight controller ESC motor combinations do not like to have bent props. They It just makes everything work a little bit funky and it gets get the motors warm. Um, and then other than that, um, who knows what that could be. Yeah, I mean, it could that. be anything, but I mean, I, I'd first start with your tune. Um, mm -hmm. And, and filtering, uh, we're not experts on filtering, but I know there is a great video out there by Joshua Bardwell, so go ahead and watch his video on, on filtering. That might be your issue, but I mean, you did say it isn't, they're not hot to the touch, so I just think that you're probably flying a little bit too hard or the props, you, your tune isn't 100% uh, ready for the props that you're flying. So I, I, I give it a try with the tune, if not with the filtering, yeah. but uh, if they're not too hot to the touch, I think it may be normal. Another thing that you could do is also lower down your D a little bit, that usually causes um, a little bit of um, of heat on the motors. Yeah. So and also, any if you're switching from from one type of prop to another, you know your tune typically needs to change a little bit with that. Some props you can get away with that, but for the most part, um, your tune does need to kind of change a little bit. Like when I went from the 5040s to the 5152s, my ch my tune needed to change just a little bit to accommodate that prop. So keep that in mind too, because the when you know that it needs to change, yeah. it may not be in the flying characteristics, it might be what you hear, and it also might be what you feel, meaning the motor's being hot. So and once again, go that. check out our previous video on any pit tuning uh, tips. So, yeah. next question, it looks like my motors come with some epoxy at the bottom, and they're his F40s, and that is absolutely normal. That's, that is how they come out of the factory, and so don't not, don't worry about that. That's not because anything is melting or anything like that. That's completely you, normal. You're not gonna be able to melt the proxy. So, <laughs> <laughs> so your next question, your last question is, why not use an F4 board instead of KISS? Well, the reason I, I didn't want to use an F4 board is because, honestly, I wasn't having any issues with the KISS flight controller, the hardware itself. The thing that I was having issues with was the firmware and the reason I confirmed that is because as soon as I switched to Betaflight 
it completely fixed all my issues and got rid of every single issue that I was having with KISS. And now, me and him will also be doing uh, a video on exactly how we resolved it and pretty much what the issue was on my channel. So if you'd like to see that, go ahead and subscribe to my channel at MV Astro. There's a couple of other things that we'll talk about in that video also that really prompted us to want to uh, switch to beta on our KISS boards. Um, first of all, there's nothing wrong with a KISS FC whatsoever. It works well, it does what it needs to do, um, but um, if I'm going to change uh, the FC that I'm using, it needs to be for another benefit, for something that is better. F4 is great, I know that they you know, operate faster and all that good things, <clears throat> but uh, ultimately, the F4 boards that are out right now really don't accommodate the foreign ones that I use, so there's really no reason to complicate that either further for myself in my build process to uh, accommodate a board that doesn't really accommodate me and the mm -hmm. foreign ones. Foreign ones are very popular. Exactly. That's pretty much everything that we use. I was sick of breaking ESCs that were mm -hmm. sticking out on the arms. Uh, not, th not that there's anything wrong with it because really there's no foreign one that accommodates 6S, truly accommodates 6S yeah. right now. So. Um, you know, you kind of have to use uh, four separate individual ESCs uh, to get that 6S. But um, as far as normal racing, like what we do with uh, 4S packs, 4-in-1s uh, are a cleaner build. It makes uh, really everything a lot easier for me. I can flash one time on one board instead of flashing four yeah. individual ESCs because some uh, flight controllers don't have a pass-through. <clears throat> exactly. Kiss. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons to, for sticking with what I have. Not and, of course, saving money is one exactly. of the biggest ones. I know? didn't have to go out and buy anything. So. I have six yeah. tokens, and I didn't want to have to sw swap out to a beta flight board. That would be ridiculous. Be ridiculous. On all six of them. That would have been a waste of money for me. Yeah. But yeah. Um, with that, let's go ahead and move on to the next question. We have another question by GI Tech, and he is asking... Will the frame warranty be void if I drill some holes, but the frame doesn't break at those holes? Yes. yes that is an absolutely yes. Don't, there's, you no know modifications what, there, to the yeah, frame. No modifications to the frame. You know, if there's something that you want to change, you want to make something custom for yourself, by all means, if it, if you think it's going to benefit you, but do what you want to do. Uh, but as far as before, the Tokyo frame is concerned, if you modify it at all, you're not going to get that warranty anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I would suggest to you, um, get with someone that... Uh, does some some frames locally wherever you are and uh, maybe get with them and work on some designs i mean mm -hmm. you can't you know if you have something that's really slick put it out there man you know build it yep. yourself put it out there sure okay his next question he had is the three inch version will it have a 20 20 millimeter or 15 15 millimeter pcb standoff spacing could it be slots to accommodate for both even the butter mount bushings and by the three inch he's talking about this right here so I put this out on my social media on Instagram. If you guys want to follow me, is at, at MV Astro on Instagram. Uh, this here is the Phuket three inch, and that right there is a four inch version. And um, yes, we still have the butter mount that we did on the Tokyo's. Yeah, it's 36 by 36. So th these are still prototypes, so they s may slightly change, but um, I could say this thing is freaking fun. Yeah, this thing this, this, is awesome. I've had so much fun with it, man. I can't, you, I can't tell you these how much. These are fun. These turn great. I mean, fantastic. They'll just yep. turn on their We're own just, axis. They're so light. No problem. You know, yeah. no momentum on, around the turn or anything like that. Two bladed, four inch props. If you can't tell. Yeah, these and then awesome. these are the three inch. Um, pretty much 30 76s, I mm -hmm. believe. They're like 50 51s, but mm -hmm. in three inch. Yeah. And uh, we really have them cool. at the store too. Really fast. But really these fast. things are awesome. These things are really awesome. And to answer your question about the 2020, uh, no, we will have the 2020 as well. I don't know if you can see it. I'll show you guys. The bottom accommodates for the regular 36 by 36 and also by 2020, but the 2020 will not have a uh, butter, butter mount. mount. But this is a prototype, so that may change. So do not keep me, don't don't keep don't my word. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't do that. So it may change or anything. But so far, 36 and 36, Seems to be where we're heading with this. You know, these these F twenties. I could. I seriously doubt that you could get enough vibration out of these motors to oh, yeah, affect the flight controller. Um, but if you if you did, maybe maybe might might decide to put some uh, butter mounts some on butter that mounts on, for on the twenty twenty. But I mean, mm. like you said, though, I don't think the F twenties will cause enough vibrations to cause those oscillations no, too down tiny. at the low end. And yeah. for his last question, are you thinking about a four inch version of the three inch? Well, 
Yes, we are. We have the Phuket <laughs> foreign version right there. That is it right there. So, right yes, there. we are bringing out a foreign yeah. version of that. And this um, is the Phuket, P-H-U-K-E-T. Yeah. I'm currently the only one that's rocking this right now. So. <laughs> and I'm currently the only one rocking the three inch. So, yeah. with that, that concludes our first Q&A by Seth Hendo and your boy NB Astro. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And hopefully, we got to answer every single one of you guys' questions and pretty much... I hope you guys understand and fix your issues if uh, you guys had any doubts. With that, don't forget to go subscribe and check out our videos at my YouTube channel. You can find me at MV Astro and also find me on Instagram at MV Astro. So with that, see you guys on the next one. And do not forget to ask more questions on the next blog post. So peace out yeah. and we see you guys on the next one. See ya!